the 2021 IEEE Vision, Innovation, and Challenges Summit and Honor Ceremony offers keynotes delivered by world-class thought leaders and technologists. And the highlight of the three-day virtual event is the recognition of global visionaries whose work has and continues to benefit humanity on a grand scale. Visit the awards website at corporate-awards.ieee.org. We'll include that URL in the show notes for more information. Today, I'm interviewing Professor Rosina Bishi, the winner of the 2021 IEEE Medal for Innovations in Healthcare Technology. Professor Bishi received her PhD in electrical engineering from Slovak Technical University in Bratislava in 1967, and then her PhD in computer science from Stanford University in 1972. She founded the GRASS Lab General Robotic and Active Perception Laboratory in 1979 at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. She is a member of the National Academy of Engineering and National Academy of Medicine. For the last 60 years, she has devoted her life to fostering new ideas that bridge the gap between man and machine. Thank you so much for joining us, Professor Bishi. So with respect to talking about asking the hard questions, and looking at problems, I think this past year, a lot of us have been spending a lot of time doing that. Right, right. Specifically, this recent pandemic has made some of us try telemedicine for the first time. Medicare is only recently starting to allow payments for telehealth visits. Why do you think it took us so long? Um, it's complicated. Uh, in general, advances in healthcare and medicine are, are very complicated. And um, if you think about it, before this pandemic, there was a lot of emphasis on research in DNA. And that, that is because, especially in academic institutions, and the reason for that was that DNA is basically, you can do it sort of outside of the body and, and it's on the scale of understanding of molecules, which is biochemistry. And, it's, and, and you don't have to deal with the human body, which where the, the com complexity is tremendous. I'm not saying that DNA work and the protein configurations are not complex. They are very complex. And actually a lot of the computer technology is facilitating to, to create and analyze and describe some of these complexities, but is far less complex than the whole human body. Now, if you move this to the healthcare, where you know what happens here affects the whole body, and and you really don't know how to predict how it affects it, or at least most of the time you don't know how to predict. So, in order to really perform diagnosis and therefore therapy you know, because first you need to diagnose and then you can prescribe therapy, are two extremely complicated, complex systems that you are dealing with. And of course, um, the long history of healthcare and medical profession has taught us as a scientific society that we have to be very careful what we promise because the, the guarantees uh, are, are extremely vague and, 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 and uh, it's hard to make guarantees. I am going to cure you from, for this or that. So in that sense, the medical profession is quite conservative and based on that you really are dealing with life and death. And so people are very, very careful. And so uh, the, this um, 
generally healthcare is is very careful how it accepts new chemical in interventions or physical interventions you know machines of some sort or so, so you have to sympathize with the the health providers that they proceed rather carefully with a lot of testing and and a lot of precautions i never thought of it that way but now that you lay it out it does make sense to me now the telehealth is is just one of those technologies that you are trying to uh, use the technology which enables you to communicate in distance just like we are doing it now with the Zoom, all right? So you can see things even if you are not physically there present. But the telehealth is part of this. How much can we believe that the, the, the diagnostics in this distance way? And the worst part is how can we intervene in a distance in such a way that we are helping and not hurting? So do you think we'll use the telehealth more in the long term? And do you think it will reduce the overall cost of healthcare? In certain instances, yes. Other instances, we will still need to develop a lot of technology in order to make that happen. When I say yes, in distances such as whenever you can convert the diagnostics into some picture or audio or written statement, all right? And say, okay, this diagnostics is, is, I guarantee you the correctness, the accuracy up to a certain point because nothing is absolutely perfect. Then on the other side, the doctor, the, the health provider can make some decisions and, and suggest some remedy, okay? But, it, but the, the person who is making these decisions depends on the accuracy of those diagnostic tools that you are providing. And, the, and um, as I said, if, if those tools are reliable enough for that particular problem, then the decision maker will make proper decisions. But this is very, we have to be very careful because it's very limited at this point. <laughs>